there's always that moment when life shifts. Sometimes it's subtle, like a creaking floorboard in the night, small, unnoticed until it isn't. Other times, it's violent, tearing through your chest like a fist-sized hole, sucking out everything you thought you knew. My life, up until now, had been a series of neatly stacked blocks. Everything in its place. A career I could manage, a house I could afford, and a wife I loved. Her name is Leah. Ten years together, eight of them married. We weren't perfect, but who is? At least, I thought we weren't. What I'm about to tell you, it's not pretty. But it's real, as real as the weight pressing down on my chest as I sit here writing this. I'm telling you this because you deserve to know how things can fall apart without you even realizing it, and maybe because I need to get it out of me before it eats me alive. But I also want you to stick around, trust me, the twist isn't what you think it is. This isn't just a story about love and betrayal. It's about what comes after you found the truth you never wanted to see. It all started a month ago. Life was normal, boring, even. Leah and I had our routines. She worked as a graphic designer, freelancing from home while I slogged away in an office downtown. We'd come home, have dinner, maybe watch a show together, then go to bed. Comfortable. Predictable. Like slipping into a favorite old shirt that's worn just right. But looking back, there were tiny fractures I didn't want to see, cracks I smoothed over because that's what you do when you've been married for as long as we had. You compromise. You let things slide. What I didn't know was that Leah had stopped letting things slide a long time ago. It was a Thursday, late afternoon. I remember because I'd just gotten home from work. Leah was in the kitchen, chopping vegetables for dinner. She looked normal, focused, calm, nothing out of place. That's what got me. She looked so damn normal. But when I went to put my coat on the hook, I noticed her phone sitting on the counter. It buzzed, lighting up. It wasn't unusual for her to get messages, but something made me stop. Maybe it was the way her eyes flicked to the phone, just for a second, before she looked away and kept shopping. I couldn't tell you why, but I reached for it. Maybe it was boredom, maybe it was curiosity, maybe it was just that faint sense of something being off. The screen was still lit, and the message was right there in front of me. Miss you already. That was it. Four words. Four fucking words. I could feel my stomach drop, and I knew. I didn't even need to unlock it. I didn't need to read the conversation or see the sender's name. My mind raced through every possibility, maybe it was a joke, maybe it was some stupid friendly banter. Maybe I was overreacting. But I knew. You just know when something's wrong. I don't know how long I stood there staring at the phone, but it felt like time slowed down. My brain was scrambling to catch up to what my gut had already figured out. I could hear Leah in the background, the knife against the cutting board, the sound of running water. Normal sounds. Everyday sounds. But nothing felt normal anymore. I didn't say anything then. I couldn't. Instead, I put the phone down, walked over to the fridge, and grabbed a beer. I sat at the kitchen table and watched her. My hands were steady, but my heart was pounding in my chest. I didn't look at her the same way anymore. It was like a switch had been flipped. Every detail about her felt foreign, wrong. The way she hummed under her breath while cooking, the little frown of concentration on her face, things I used to find endearing now made my skin crawl. Leah didn't notice. Or maybe she did, but she didn't ask. We ate dinner like any other night, her talking about work, me pretending to listen, all the while replaying that message in my head. Miss you already. What the hell was that supposed to mean? I didn't touch my food. Couldn't. My mind was too busy filling in the gaps, creating a narrative I didn't want but couldn't ignore. After dinner, I went upstairs, showered, and sat on the edge of the bed. Leah came up an hour later, got under the covers, and said goodnight. I stared at the ceiling for a long time that night. My body felt like it was going to split in half from the tension but I didn't say a word. Not yet. I needed proof. The next day, I took the day off from work. 
I told Leah I wasn't feeling well and stayed home after she left for a meeting. I waited until I knew she was out, then I grabbed her phone from the nightstand. The password was easy enough, I'd seen her enter it a thousand times. Once it unlocked, I went straight to the messages. My hands were shaking, but I wasn't going to stop now. There it was, a whole thread of texts between her and some guy named Jake. I scrolled through it, reading one after another. It wasn't long before I had all the confirmation I needed. The affair wasn't just some emotional thing. It was physical. Explicit. Detailed enough to make my stomach turn. They talked about meeting up at hotels, about times when I was at work, even about some of the weekends when I thought she was visiting her mom. I sat there, phone in hand, the words burning into my brain. I didn't realize I'd been holding my breath until I let out this low, guttural sound. I was trying to stay calm, but that wasn't going to happen. My heart was pounding, and every second I read felt like a slap in the face. I heard the front door open downstairs. Leah was back. My hands clenched around the phone. I didn't care about playing it cool anymore. I was going to confront her. I walked downstairs, still holding her phone. Leah was setting her keys down on the counter when she saw me standing there. She smiled at me, like everything was normal. The sight of it made me sick. Hey, feeling any better, she asked, her voice casual. I held up the phone. What the hell is this? Her smile dropped immediately. She glanced at the phone, then back at me, and I could see the panic in her eyes. For a second, she didn't say anything and that silence was all I needed to confirm everything. What, what are you talking about, she stammered. Jake, I said, my voice flat. You want to explain that? Her face went pale. It's not what you think. I laughed, but it didn't feel like a laugh. More like a sound I'd never heard myself make before. Not what I think. Really? Because from what I just read, it's exactly what I think. She looked like she was searching for words, but none came out. I didn't let her off the hook. I stepped closer, shoving the phone toward her. How long, Leah? How long has this been going on? She backed up a step. Please, let me explain. How? Long. She swallowed hard, her eyes darting around like she was trying to find a way out. Six months, she finally said, her voice barely above a whisper. Six months. Six months of lying, cheating, and pretending everything was fine. I felt my whole body go cold. I wanted to scream, but the words got stuck in my throat. I didn't mean for it to happen, she said, her voice breaking. It just, it just happened. I shook my head. It didn't just happen, Leah. You made a choice. Every time you texted him, met him, lied to me, you made a choice. I was lonely, she blurted out, tears starting to well up. You were always working, and I felt like we were drifting apart. I wasn't thinking clearly. Don't you dare blame this on me, I snapped, my voice rising. Don't you fucking dare. I've been here. I've been working, sure, but for us. For our future. And this is what you do. She broke down then, crying, apologizing, saying all the things you'd expect. But none of it mattered. Her words were empty, just noise. I didn't care about her tears, didn't care about her excuses. The truth was out, and nothing she said was going to fix it. I wanted to smash something. Break something. But instead, I just stood there, staring at her. The anger didn't leave. It burned hotter the more I thought about it. I couldn't get the image of them together out of my head, her sneaking around behind my back. I wasn't going to let her walk away from this untouched. If she wanted to play dirty, then fine. I'd give her something to remember. That weekend, I decided I wasn't going to say anything more about what I'd found. Leah acted like she was trying to fix things. She apologized over and over, offered to go to therapy, whatever it took. But I wasn't listening. I had other plans. I knew she had another meeting with Jake the next week. 
She didn't tell me, of course, but I saw the texts. They arranged to meet at a hotel across town. Instead of confronting her again, I set things in motion. The day of their little rendezvous, I told Leah I had to go out of town for work, so I wouldn't be home. She didn't ask any questions, didn't even hesitate. It was almost laughable how easy it was. She left the house around noon, thinking she was free to do whatever she wanted. I followed her. Parked a few blocks away from the hotel. Watched as she met up with him in the lobby like they didn't have a care in the world. They were all smiles, like I didn't exist. It was disgusting, but I stayed calm. I had something better in mind. Before leaving the house that morning, I packed up all her things, clothes, personal stuff, everything that mattered to her, and hauled it all to the garage. Then I posted it online for free. By the time she and Jake were checking into their room, strangers were at our house picking through her things like it was a garage sale. It didn't take long for people to clear out most of it. I made sure her favorite things were the first to go. The art supplies she loved, the jewelry her mom gave her, all of it. Gone. By the time she got home that evening, the house looked like she'd never even lived there. I was sitting on the couch when she walked in. She glanced around, confused. What the hell happened here? I looked at her, calm as I could be. I got rid of everything. You don't need any of it, right? Since you've been staying at hotels. Her face went white. She looked around, realizing what I'd done. You, you threw my stuff out? I smiled. No. I gave it away. All of it. It's amazing how quickly people show up when you offer free shit online. She stood there, speechless, her eyes wide. I could see the panic set in, like she finally understood what I was capable of. She wasn't in control anymore. I was. You had no right, she finally said, her voice trembling. I had every right, I replied. You think you can cheat on me and just come back here like nothing happened? No, Leah. That's not how this works. You don't get to keep everything while you're screwing someone else. I'm done being the nice guy. She tried to argue, but the words fell flat. There was nothing she could say. I didn't hit her, didn't scream. I didn't need to. I'd taken everything she valued and tossed it into the hands of strangers. That was enough. I stood up and walked past her, heading upstairs. You might want to find a new place to sleep tonight. This house isn't yours anymore. The night after I cleared out Leah's things, the house was quiet. She didn't leave, though. She stayed. I heard her downstairs, probably sitting on the couch, her mind racing, trying to figure out what to do next. I didn't go down. I didn't care where she slept or what she was thinking. I just wanted to be alone. But the next morning, she came to me. I was sitting at the kitchen table, sipping my coffee, not even looking at her when she walked in. She stood there for a minute, waiting for me to say something. When I didn't, she finally spoke. Can we talk? I didn't respond right away. I let her stand there in the awkward silence until I finished my coffee. Then I set the mug down and looked at her. Talk about what? She hesitated. About us. About what happens next. I stared at her, my expression blank. There is no us, Leah. That's done. Her eyes were red, swollen from crying. But I didn't feel any sympathy. Not anymore. I know I messed up, she started, her voice shaking. I know I hurt you. But we can fix this. We can try therapy. We can talk about what went wrong. I felt a strange kind of numbness wash over me. Like the part of me that used to care was gone, wiped clean. Why? What's the point? Because, she paused, clearly scrambling to find something that would hit me emotionally. Because we've been together for ten years. That has to mean something. I love you, and I know you love me. I shook my head, almost laughing at the irony. Love? Don't give me that. You don't love me. You love the life you built with me, the stability. 
You didn't even have the decency to end things before jumping into bed with someone else. She started crying again, but I wasn't moved. I'd heard all the apologies. The words meant nothing to me. I made a mistake, okay? I know that. I wasn't thinking, I was confused. But I'm willing to do whatever it takes to fix this. I leaned forward, elbows on the table, looking her dead in the eyes. You think this is something you can fix? Like you can just hit the reset button and pretend none of this happened? Do you think I can just forget that you cheated, that you lied to my face every day for months? She looked down, sobbing quietly. I could tell she was struggling, searching for something, anything, that would convince me to give her a chance. But there was nothing left to say. Here's what's going to happen, I continued, my voice steady. You're going to pack up whatever's left of your stuff, and you're going to leave. I don't care where you go. But you're not staying here. She looked up at me, her eyes wide with desperation. Please, don't do this. We can at least try to work through it. We owe it to ourselves to try. I shook my head. No. I owe you nothing. You made your choice. Now you live with it. There was a long pause. She didn't move, didn't say anything. She just stood there, tears streaming down her face. Part of me expected her to keep begging, to try and guilt me into changing my mind. But she didn't. Maybe she knew it was useless by now. Finally, she nodded, defeated. Okay, she whispered. If that's what you want. It's not about what I want, Leah. It's about what's already been done. You can't undo this. She wiped her face, still standing there for a few moments longer, before turning and walking out of the kitchen. I didn't watch her go. I just sat there, staring at the empty space in front of me. In that moment, I realized something, the anger, the betrayal, it was all starting to fade. What was left was something quieter. Not peace, but something close. It wasn't forgiveness. I wasn't ready for that, maybe I never would be. But I didn't need to hold on to the anger anymore. She wasn't worth that much space in my head. It was over. I had my answer. Leah left the house that same afternoon. She packed what little remained of her things without much fuss, just a quiet, defeated resignation. I watched her carry the bags to her car, but I didn't say anything. What was there left to say? The ten years we'd spent together were reduced to these few silent trips to and from the front door, her footsteps echoing in the empty spaces where furniture used to be. When the engine started, and I heard the tires crunch on the gravel, I felt, nothing. No sense of closure, no relief, no sadness. Just an empty space where emotions should have been. It wasn't until the next day, when I walked through the house and saw everything she touched, that it hit me. The house didn't feel like mine anymore. Every room felt hollow, like it had been drained of its meaning. This was the home we had built together, filled with memories, good and bad, and now it was just a place. A structure, walls, and a roof. I realized that I didn't want to live there anymore. Not because of what had happened, but because it didn't feel like home now that she was gone. I started packing my own things that night. I didn't have a plan, didn't know where I was going, but staying there wasn't an option. It felt like staying in the past, and I couldn't do that. I couldn't let myself get stuck in the ruins of what used to be. Over the next few days, I thought a lot about what had happened. About the affair, the anger, the way I'd retaliated. I didn't regret any of it. Not the confrontation, not the revenge. But what surprised me was how quickly the rage had faded. When I looked back at everything, I didn't feel anger anymore. Just exhaustion. I had been carrying the weight of Leah's betrayal for months, long before I even knew about it. Now that it was all out in the open, I realized how much it had drained me. Leah and I had one last conversation before I left town. She called me, not to argue or beg, but to ask for clarity. She wanted to know if there was any chance we could be civil, if we could at least try to have a conversation without the walls between us. I agreed, not because I owed her anything, but because I wanted that closure for myself. We met at a cafe, neutral ground. 
When she walked in, she looked different, almost fragile. We sat down across from each other, awkward silence hanging between us. She was the first to speak. I didn't come here to ask for forgiveness, she said quietly. I just want to understand what happens next. I took a deep breath. What happens next is we move on. Separately. There's no fixing this, Leah. There's no going back. I've thought about it, and I've accepted that it's over. We're done. She nodded, tears welling up in her eyes, but she didn't argue. I understand. I just. I'm sorry. For everything. I know, I replied, and I meant it. But that didn't change anything. It doesn't change what happened, though. We're too far gone for that. There was a long pause. We both sat there, sipping our drinks, not really sure how to end things. Finally, she spoke again. Do you hate me? I looked at her, really looked at her, and for the first time since I'd found out about the affair, I realized that I didn't hate her. I was hurt, angry, and disappointed, but hate wasn't the right word. No, I said after a moment. I don't hate you. But I don't love you anymore, either. That was the hardest part to say, and from the look on her face, the hardest part for her to hear. But it was the truth, and she deserved to know it. We didn't say much after that. We both knew it was the end, and there wasn't any need to drag it out. She left first, and I stayed behind for a while, just sitting there, staring at the cup in front of me. I felt lighter, somehow, like I'd finally let go of something heavy I'd been carrying for too long. Looking back on it all now, I've realized that what I went through wasn't about revenge or anger. It was about letting go. I had to burn it all down, our marriage, the life we had, the person I used to be, so I could move on. Leah had already done that when she chose to cheat, whether she admitted it or not. I was just catching up. What's next for me? I don't know yet. But I do know this, I'm not the same person I was a month ago. And that's not a bad thing. I'm moving forward, one step at a time. And wherever that takes me, it's got to be better than where I've been.